Hello and welcome to the introduction to the drugs wheel presentation. It will give a brief overview of methods of drug classification and explore how a new wave of psychoactive substances led to the development of the drugs wheel model. Nature provided us with a wide range of mind-altering psychoactive plants and fungi, which can be classified based on their effects. Sedatives, such as opium, stimulants, such as coca, and hallucinogens, such as psilocybin mushrooms. Cannabis at this stage was a sedative drug. However, it has become stronger over the years, which has led to it having other non-sedative effects. As the 20th century progressed, the pharmaceutical industry developed. More drugs came onto the market, and by the latter part of the 20th century, the DASH model of classification appeared. DASH stands for depressant, analgesic, stimulant and hallucinogenic. And it split the previous sedative group into the two subsections of depressants, to include newer barbiturate drugs, and analgesics, painkilling or opioid drugs. For the most part, drugs fit into a category. However, drug effects are very complex, and there were inevitably some discrepancies. Cannabis, as already mentioned, became stronger over the years. THC content has risen, and the ratio of THC to CBD within cannabis plants has changed. It began to have some stimulant effects such as racing heartbeat and also more hallucinogenic qualities. Ketamine was also hard to categorise as it fit into various groups. It increases heart rate, yet it is a central nervous system depressant and can lead to unconsciousness. It is a potent painkiller and also causes significant hallucinations. Many drug workers and trainers began to use the other box for drugs that were hard to place. As the wave of new psychoactive substances began to appear on the market, this other box became the receptacle for a range of new compounds such as the synthetic cannabinoid receptor agonists, MDAI, an interesting compound that will be discussed further, aryl cyclohexylamines such as methoctexamine or MXE, and PCP derivatives such as 3-MeO-PCP. By 2012, the other box was becoming overfilled, and a group of professionals working in the UK drugs field called Drug Watch drew up a new model of classification called the Drugs Wheel. The Drugs Wheel added three new categories to the DASH model. Cannabinoids, to include cannabis and the raft of synthetic cannabinoids receptor agonists, which had effects that were specific to this new group of compounds. Dissociatives, to include ketamine, the aracyclohexlamines, and PCP and its derivatives. The empathogen category, which includes those drugs that primarily affect serotonin levels. This category has in many ways been the most contentious. As many empathogenic drugs have also got stimulant qualities, the need for a separate category for these drugs has been questioned. There were, however, two main reasons for the creation of this category. Firstly, users of the drug MDAI reported symptoms of increased levels of serotonin, for example, dilated pupils, hot and cold flushes but without any signs of stimulant activity. Without an empathogen group, there was no other MDAI could fit within the model. Secondly, concerns were raised around serotonin syndrome caused by MDAI and other serotonergic drugs, and it was felt that discussions around serotonin levels were therefore important for harm reduction advice and information. So to future-proof the model, the empathogen group was integrated into the drugs wheel. It must be noted that drug effects are complex, however, and many drugs can fit into various categories depending on a number of factors. The drugs wheel is not intended to be a definitive source of information. Rather, it is designed as an all-inclusive model, meaning that all currently known psychoactive drugs fit into a category. The wheel is updated regularly, and over 25 incremental updates have been released since 2012. In this version, the outer ring lists drugs that are controlled by UK legislation, the Misuse of Drugs Act and Medicines Act, while the inner ring lists legal drugs as of April 2016. The inner and outer rings of the wheel allow for drugs to be split into subcategories, for example, legal status, prescribed or non-prescribed, or when working with clients you could ask them to place drugs according to which they think are lower or higher risk. Drug workers have reported that using the drugs wheel model simplifies the very complex drug landscape. Rather than having to learn details of all of the 550 plus compounds known to the European Monitoring Centre, drug information and harm reduction information can instead be given by category. This graphic gives a rough overview of some of the typical effects that might be associated with different categories. 
A high resolution PDF of this image, along with many others, are available on thedrugswheel.com. The Drugs Wheel is licensed under Creative Commons, meaning that people are allowed to adapt, remix and build upon this piece of work non-commercially, as long as appropriate credit is given and that any amended work remains under a Creative Commons license. The idea behind this was to ensure that everyone has free access to the Drugs Wheel and that individuals or agencies can adapt it to meet their specific needs. For example, an addiction agency in Paris recently developed a French version and shown here is the Effects Wheel. You're encouraged to make use of the model as you see fit. If you would like to collaborate on a project, please get in touch via the contact page of the website where you will find a range of free resources. Drugs Wheel in PDF and PowerPoint formats. A free do-it-yourself Drugs Wheel game and training videos on how to use the game. A range of Drug Watch information sheets including information on specific substances as well as on topics such as overdose and emergencies and UK legislation. To get in touch or to join the mailing list, please use the contact page on the website. Thank you!